and hello guys today we are on this lovely little mini cooper uh, union jack on the roof as it should be uh, this is a 1999 model first of the fuel injection uh, nice little car the issue with this one today is that when you press the throttle it revs up and it doesn't come back down the revs don't come back down and i'll demonstrate so move this out of the way ignition on sounds quite nice it's got a nice little exhaust pipe on the back sporty one a stainless steel i've already done a battery test on it battery's fine so the basic checks are done i'll just demonstrate the fault so it fires up nice idles nice and then we'll tap the throttle Uh, hang on a minute. This is a, this has gone wrong already. Right, so I'll talk you through the story. I came out here and got told the story. I the issue was already removed. The pins on the issue where they connect, they were actually. Let me turn the engine off so you can hear what I'm saying. The pins on the issue where they connect to the vehicle were actually quite badly corroded. The connector's down there. I won't remove it now, but this is the issue. And the, there was green um, corrosion on the pins. So I cleaned those, connected it up, and plugged it back in. And it was doing what it was doing so it was going up to climbing up to about four or five thousand rpm by itself as soon as you tap the throttle now it's working and i'm a bit confused um yeah slightly confused now bear me one minute so basically this is a bit of a confusing one it's actually the vehicle's fine now it's the throttle's working as it should um i'm going to assume it was down to the corroded connectors on the ecu i was assuming it was going to be a failed ecu because there is no communication with the scanner and the uh engine control unit at all so i can't get to it in any way shape or form um on the auto vin check and the emergency check engine system which runs through all the protocols all the basic protocols to see if it can connect in any way shape or form to the issue and it could not um, put the chassis number in couldn't identify it so um i was pretty sure it was gonna be a failed ecu especially because the throttle wasn't linked it was you know getting false signal from the throttle position sensor um, i did i broke the breakout box out just to do a can high can low um test there's no resistance between these two there's no resistance between these two there's no resistance between these two so there should be kilo ohm, kilo ohms between this and this chassis ground and can low should be around 25 kilo ohms i believe same on the can high i believe um, and then normally on a CAN bus network you'd have 120 ohms between these two no sorry 60 ohms between these two because you'd have two 120 ohm terminating resistors in each end of the CAN network so 120 ohms doubled is 60 ohms resistance because that's how resistance works it, it lowers the resistance it doesn't you know add to it so yes um, yeah, I'm a bit stumped to be honest. Like I say, there's no communication. There's still no communication now. I don't know whether because it's a 99 and it's on the cusp of the OBD. I mean, I've obviously got an OBD socket, but OBD sockets came out in 98 and this is 99. First fuel injection system. I'm not sure if we're using the right computer for this car. I would assume it is okay um, because it's got all the protocols in it, um, but for some reason it's not connecting. So there's either a fault on the CAN network on this car or the connection between the ODB socket and the ECU or um, this computer just can't connect to it. One of the two. Uh, I've tried to pull up wiring diagrams on all data. 
no wiring diagrams for the CAN network, no wiring diagrams for this vehicle uh, because it's a 99 I'd say. So um, again, a bit stumped for the information. Um, however, it's working now. Uh, all I did was clean the connectors, put it back together, turn it off, turn it back on, and now it's working. So it must have just been down to the corroded connectors. Um, the video was meant to be a demonstration of how to test the resistance on the network but yeah uh, I guess I guess I'm gonna have to leave it here guys it's a bit of a weird video um, I'm gonna spend some more time here before I leave and just make sure that I take it on a test drive make sure that it all works as it should and then um, yeah tell the customer that I'm guessing it was just the corroded pins um, nice simple one but um, I didn't film it because I thought it was going to be a bit more involving job um, well sorry I thought it, it wasn't that much of an involving job it was literally just uh, you know test an ECU and then basically we're going to go and get the ECU repaired so um, or tested sorry so I'll leave it here because I feel like I'm waffling now um, thanks for watching and I'll try and get a uh, more interesting video posted very soon thanks for watching bye Right, just a little um, more clear information here. Now I've managed to process this bizarre occurrence because, um, yeah, it was it caught it caught me off guard. This. So, with regards to the network, uh, th there is no canvas network on this because there's only an ECU connected, as far as I can guess. There, there's not going to be any other control units in this vehicle. It's so old. It's just the engine control unit. So, I believe my canvas tests aren't correct for this type of vehicle uh, with just an ECU and it may even be that there is no can high can low on this ECU it could be K-line something like that a more basic protocol so I am um, because I can't get the wiring diagrams I cannot clarify that so let's ignore that for now the fact of the matter is the complaint from the customer was the he had some work done on the ECU with regards to getting the immobiliser removed and um, he sent it away it came back um, and since then it gradually got worse over the period of about a year um, I was guessing it was going to be a failed ECU, that the, maybe the pe people that worked on it before maybe damaged it slightly, I do not know. Um, but yeah, it gradually became worse. So obviously, as I found those corroded pins and cleaned them, that would be a gradual pr a problem that would get gradually worse. Because the corrosion doesn't build up straight away, it happens over time, that confirms the the issues that the customer said as in it was it was a gradual build up it got worse and worse and worse and eventually the revs would just stay up high and they'd never drop back down um, so from the six connect corroded pins there was guaranteed that one of those was the throttle position sensor and now it's working spot on the reason it didn't work when i connected it in first time and just turn the ignition on is because i'm guessing the ecu didn't have a chance to get the baseline settings for all the sensors on the vehicle throttle position sensors etc temperature sensors um, and i'd left the ignition on the whole time while i was trying to fault find the vehicle so once i'd cycled the ignition off and then back on voila suddenly it was all working fine and um, yeah problem solved so the customer's absolutely over the moon he is about to go and buy a lottery ticket and he also wants me to have a look at his boiler now as well <laughs> so um so yeah nice simple fault glad the problem solved no more repairs for this customer and another great british classic back on the road um so yeah uh, we'll end the video there it wasn't as strange as i initially thought it just took a while for me to process what had happened through the fault finding procedure um because you're getting so much info on a job it's it, you know after you have to sit back for a little for a couple of minutes and just process it so um there you go thanks for watching and i'll be back soon with some more videos